the 90s, WRC had the mighty Ford RS Cosworth, Mitsubishi Evos, Subaru WRXs, and yep, we've featured them all. But of course, there are a few more hero cars from that era, one being the mighty Toyota Celica GT4. On this episode of Grassroots Garage, we have Glenn's GT4 Celica. Welcome to Grassroots Garage, we've got Glenn today. Glenn is GT4, thanks for your time. No worries, thanks Peter. Mate, uh, tell us about your car. Um, I bought it about three years ago. Um, I actually had the opportunity to buy it a, a few years before and it fell through. Um, and then I saw it come up on uh, car sales a couple of years later and uh, I had to just had to have it. Nice. Uh, and I had a, a previous version GT4 at the time. Um, and this one was for sale out at Gilgandra. So I drove all the way out to Gilgandra and put a deposit on it as soon as I could. Mm. Um, and drove the other one back and then uh, flew out to Dubbo and, uh, and went up to Gilgandra and picked it up and that was it. So the guy out in Gilgandra, had he had it from you? No, I think he was the second owner. Uh, he'd moved out there a few years before, but he'd bought it off a guy who had brought it in as a personal import from Japan. Okay. So nice. this isn't one of the Australian delivered cars. So mm -hmm. there were 77 Australian delivered cars. Mm -hmm. um, this one is one of the very few personal imports. And I think there's, I know of two, and there's probably five in Australia, no more than five. Mm. So all up, there's probably around 80 of these in Australia. That's all. But from a stock 95 Celica, what, what did they, they changed everything, didn't they? This is a totally different car to a, the normal front wheel drive Celica that you see driving around on the streets. Um, the floor pan's different. Oh, yeah, um, like it's, the yeah, the floor's different. So the only thing that's really common is, is really the outside. Okay. Um, the doors, the roof and, and the back. Um, the bonnet's obviously different in this car. It's aluminium, whereas the, the standard one is steel. Yep. It's got a different nose on it as well. Um, but the running gear is totally different in these things. Um, if you look at the, the back underneath compared to a front wheel drive car, totally different. You cannot put four wheel drive system into the front wheel drive car. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can do anything with uh, unlimited, unlimited budget, budget um, yeah. but why would you, you know, you just go and buy a, well, you can't just go and buy a GT4 because there's, there's none on the market. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, interior wise, they're, they're quite similar. Um, there's a few, you know, slightly different um, items on the in, on the interior. So different seats, similar seats. Um, similar seats. So some of the the GT4s had the option of having leather seats. Mm -hmm. um, this car doesn't have leather seats. It's got climate control. I'm not. I don't think the Australian cars have that. Mm -hmm. um, this has got an eight speaker system in it as well, which yes. is which is not um, not it's available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, quite, quite in your face. That's isn't that's it? an option. It's it's yeah. one of the uh, the the upgrade options. This is a, a generation three three S GTE. Mm -hmm. So it's two liter. Uh, it's turbo. Um, a lot of people incorrectly think that it's got a twin turbo. I hear people mm -hmm. arguing with me about that so so often. Um, it's not a twin turbo. It's a single turbo. It's yeah. just got twin entry. So the exhaust as they're coming out of the exhaust manifold um, has a twin entry into the turbo. There you go. In 1995, down at the local time zone, jump on the Sega Rally Championship. What car were you choosing? I always went for the Lancia, and Pete always chose the GT4. So the GT4, was that sort of like a dream car for you? Yeah, well this one in particular, um, I remember seeing my first one when a friend of mine used to work at MRT mm. and, um, and Ross Middleton had one of these and it would sit out the front 
um, and I'd drive past there every day looking at this white GT4 thing and oh, I'd love to have one of those. Mm. And at the time, um, back in the, the mid-90s, they were quite expensive. I think they were $83,000, which was big money for back mm -hmm. then. Yeah. So one of my favourite things on the internet is that Project Binky. And they're putting the 3S <laughs> yes. GTE into the little mini. Yes. And, it's, and looking at it now, like... In this large engine bay, there's no space for anything else. They've jammed it in. Yeah, that How is. Are you gonna fit that in a mini? I've got no idea. Well, they've managed to do it, and uh, those guys are absolute legends. Yeah, I, I can't so believe good how good they are. Yeah. Um, you know, and I've learned a lot from them. You know, I see what they do, and, and then I try and do yeah. make brackets uh, as good as they can, and obviously yeah. I fail. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the engine that they're putting into the the Mini is a Generation 2 version of this, which okay. is essentially the same. It's not that different from a size perspective. It's the same. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're right. It's just absolutely mind-boggling that they could fit such a massive donk like this into <laughs> such a small <laughs> little car. It's unbelievable. So that's a strut brace from factory. Yeah. That's nice. Yep. Was that in the that was in the front wheel drives as well? That's no, the, no. Okay, this is just for GT4. Yeah, and that's um, what you were saying about the back ends a completely different car to the two wheel drive. Yeah, totally, totally. If you look in the the two wheel drive car, you, you'll see the boot is actually a lot deeper. Okay. Yep. And you don't have this big brace mm -hmm. here, so that's actually part of the body underneath there. Yeah. Um, I think it's flat. You know, the, the the spare wheel actually sits down because there's a fuel tank under there in this car which which isn't in the same position in the front wheel drive car mm -hmm. um, but items like the the, the brace here um, it's all part of the the um, homologation for the, the rally cars So tell me about um, what got you into motorsports originally. Um, my father is a car nut, yes. so <laughs> yeah. I think that happens with most people. Yeah. Um, he's got a 1961 Triumph TR3A that he bought new, Wow. and he's still got it. Mm. Um, my dad is 77, um, forgive me dad if I get that wrong, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's 77. Um, he's got three Triumphs and he still does gearbox rebuilds, um, takes the engine out, the whole thing mm. at, at his age, which is nice. fantastic. So yeah. it's, a, it's a big passion for him. And uh, I guess it's rubbed off on me and, uh, and I've sort of taken it, taken it in a slightly different direction into you know, going into time attack. Mm. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot from him. Uh, why silly? Well, I suppose we, we'll go into the, the MR2 a bit later, but why Toyotas? Um, I didn't specifically choose Toyota. Um, my first Toyota was the MR2. Mm. Um, I previously had a, a 1980 RS2000 Escort race car. Nice. <laughs> and <laughs> although it was it was a pretty good car, it just didn't have enough power. Mm -hmm. um, so I had the choice of either spending a ridiculous amount of money on incrementally increasing the power or mm -hmm. sell it and get something that's got a lot of power to start off with. And a mate of mine was selling a, an MR2 race car, mm -hmm. so I snapped it up and that was my introduction to Toyota. So the MR2 is a, a time attack race car. Mm -hmm. um, it's got more than double the power that this thing has got. So it's got um, uh, about 320 kilowatts at the wheels, so that's about 500 horsepower at the flywheel in old speak, mm -hmm. and it weighs just over a ton. So it's a, it's a lot of fun, um, a bit scary at times, um, but I do most of the work on it myself. Um, so most of my enjoyment is from building it. It's probably about 60% enjoyment from building it and about 40% from driving it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it, it's a great car. If I gave you an unlimited budget, what would this car look like? exactly what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, I yeah. thought that might be the case. I'd probably give it a respray because the, the paint's starting to get a little bit old. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm keeping it like this for a reason. Um, I've got my race car, that's the one where I'm doing all the mods and everything on and I really want to keep this car just really, really nice and I just like to, to cruise around in it and, uh, and get enjoyment from the car. Yeah, yeah. So, unlimited budget, what would the MR2 look like? <laughs> 
Ah, uh, yes. It would probably be a much higher quality than what it is at the moment. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I've got a, a budget with that car. Um, you know, a lot of people would look at it and go, look, it's not at the same standard as some of the big teams, but obviously so. I have nowhere near uh, as much money, so, mm -hmm. you know, you have to cut some corners every now and again. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would be, you know, the fastest time attack car in the world if I had an unlimited budget. Bonus footage at the end of this episode. We have Glenn's MR2 at Wakefield Park. Car history, tell me about your first car. My first car, um, I think a lot of people are going to laugh when, when they hear this. It was a 1976 Triumph Dolomite Sprint. Oh yeah. Um, I can't remember how many were brought into Australia, um, but you could get them in any colour you liked, as long as it was yellow. Yellow, yeah. Yellow with a black vinyl roof. <laughs> um, I did actually, I, I, I liked the car and I had it for 10 years, mm -hmm. um, and I'd done it up quite nicely. It, it had uh, all the interior had been redone and the, the paint had been redone and it was lowered and all of that kind of thing that, you know, people usually do. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, it was still a 1976 Triumph. Um, it went really, really well in a straight line, didn't really turn very well, didn't brake very well. Pretty ugly, to be honest. Mm, um, yeah. I moved on and I bought something else. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I was happy, happy what, that I did that. What did you move into after that? Um, a Holden Calibra. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, a bit yeah, different. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't like them, but um, drive, I, I love that car. Problem, it was, it? A, yeah. it was a really good car yeah. when compared with the Triumph. Yeah, see, all I, all I know from Calibra is I took the wheels off when I put them on my Gemini. That was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have looked nice. Yeah, they were good, they were good wheels, but um, those Calibras, yeah, they were a good little car, weren't they? Sort of two-door coupe. Pretty good, yeah. yeah. Mine was the twin cam one, nice, um, yeah. twin cam five-speed, mm -hmm. um, and they went a lot better than what people think. All right, if I give you the unlimited budget, we've, we've got the world's quickest time attack MR2. <laughs> We've got this thing looking exactly as it does. What else would you keep in the garage? I really want a Honda NSX. Yeah. And yeah. I know they're a similar age. Red, um, would you go red again? Oh, I'd probably have to go for a different color because the MR2 is red as well. Yeah. You can't have too many, <laughs> well, you can have too many red cars. A little bit out of my price range at the moment. Um, you know, a, a good one's over 100,000. I don't think they're um, much lower either. No, nah, they'll, they'll, they'll still go up, but they just look awesome. I mean, they're not the fastest car on the road, but certainly one of the best looking cars on the road. I think so. Yeah, definitely. What else? <laughs> what, else? what else would you keep? Oh, I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably pivot and go for a, a, a muscle American car from the late oh, 60s. Yeah, nice, yeah. Uh, maybe a Chevy Impala two-door pillarless. Um, something like that. Yeah. Um, but obviously you need a little bit more space for such a big car, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I don't have. Yeah. So, unlimited budget, I'd uh, have a bigger garage. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So that's it for Glenn's beautiful GT4 Celica. Glenn, thanks for your time. No worries. Thanks, thanks. mate. Thanks. Now, bonus footage time. Who wants to come on board with Glenn in his Time Attack MR2 for a quick lap around Wakefield Park? How quick? Well, how does 104 sound? That's a lap record for an MR2, by the way. 